Swing and a high drive into center field. Hits at the wall. It is gone. Passes does it again. Again. It's gone. It's into the bullpen. This game is tied. This game is tied. And he swings and rips one to center field. It's high. It's deep. It's back. It's gone. Sale winds. He fires. Swing and a miss. Right play. It's over. The Red Sox. Welcome back to Play Test Seed. It's episode 59. If you're listening on drop day, it's April, which means it's actually baseball season, even though baseball season started a couple days ago. Episode 59, we're getting into the nitty gritty and the deep. I'm not going with Sam Traps. I'm going with Tommy Lane. It's the Tommy Lane episode. We love Tommy Lane. Lefty Lane. He was actually pretty good. This is the official podcast of putting cream cheese on things that shouldn't have cream cheese, also known as... That's the official Red Sox podcast of WEI. That's right, Sammy. No one's eating your effing hot dog. Wow. No one. There's no way any anyone on Nesson or EEI or any of the players ate that thing this weekend. No chance. Nobody tried it. I tried. I tried to get Lou to try it. I tweeted at Jamai to see if he would try it. Uh, TC didn't try it. Nobody tried it, and and they all missed out. So what is it again? It's a hot dog with cream cheese and and something else. And they, it's not a lot of cream cheese. Like they smear cream cheese on the inside of the bun and then they put like sauteed onions on top. It's amazing. It sounds gross, but like y- you try it and you realize you get the hype. So, Pat, would you eat that? No. And I am, frankly, as an uninvolved party, am stunned that you thought Jemai would do anything you said after you ran a smear campaign against him. Wait, I didn't yes. run a smear. We, we asked the questions. We didn't run the smear campaign. We asked the questions. We and- have to. We have to get into this. I, I totally, I totally thought we were just gonna jump into a series recap here, but we have to talk about the Nesson stuff. But before we do that, before we do that, hit that subscribe button. Odyssey app, uh, Apple, Spotify. Hit that subscribe button. Rate us five stars. Leave a comment. Tell us what you think about about the Sox split the series with the Mariners. YouTube. We're on YouTube. Wei's channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment there as well. And we are on the social at Play Tessie on both Twitter and Instagram. Here with Sammy and Pat. But yeah, I guess before we get into this whole uh, this whole Sox Mariners first series of the season, we kind of have to jump in and talk about this Nesson stuff because obviously we had those clips. Sammy and I went to Fort Myers and we were asking all sorts of different people about. The island stuff, like who would they bring to their island and who would they leave behind? And we asked three Nesson people. We asked Mike Monaco, Will Middlebrooks, and Tom Karen who they would take and who they wouldn't. And they gave they all gave different answers to who they would take, but they all chose that they wouldn't take Jemai Webster. And all of those videos came out on our socials in the last like few days or so. And like obviously Jemai kind of took some, I don't know. If slander is the wrong word because it's not slander, but like I definitely feel like he was like a little bit not irked, but like oh, like hurt about it. Maybe hurts the right word. Did you guys get yeah, that we, vibe? He got oh, cut yeah. deep. His own his own colleagues didn't pick him to go on the island, but actually one guy did. Did you guys see who did pick Jemai? It was Jonathan Papelbon. True. Yeah. Pap, Pap gave him a lifeboat. Pap Pap to the rescue for Jemai there. Yeah. They absolutely Julius caesar the hell out of poor Jemai. And then I offered Jemai to come on the show, and he was upset because I only I waited until after he got slandered to ask. But it's because he wasn't in Fort Myers. If he were there, we would have asked him the same question. So oh, we, we got gone Jemai right up to him. On. Yeah, we got to get Jemai on at some point. I want him to like state his case why he would be the best guy to go on the island. I think he could handle it. Yeah, but but the cool thing though was that during the Nesson pregame show before game three of the series, they put together a little uh, compilation of the videos and did a whole segment on it, like a whole five-minute segment in the pregame show about the islands, talking about Jemai, and then TC asked Lenny DiNardo and Jim Rice who they would bring on their islands. Uh, Jim Rice had easily the best answer that I can't believe none of us I would argue of. the only correct answer now that yes. I, we've brought to my attention. He said he would bring Charlie Moore because Charlie Moore could could fish. Well, it's like uh, Joelli's answer. Joelli said he would take Brian Bayo because he's from Samana, which is by the water, and he can fish. And he That's wouldn't true. take Pablo Reyes because he's from the city and can't fish. So it's the fishing, the fishing take. But I do agree. Out of the Nesson guys, I, I feel like Charlie Moore is just like a complete 
no brain. Hey, there it is. Wait. Also, we need to put this out there. So uh, they did something on it again on the deserted island thing before in the pregame show before game four of the series. I didn't have it on and I wasn't recording. So I haven't even seen it, but I know they talked about it again. If any two questions for the public and God DM us, tweet at us, anything, just tell us. I have a recording on my DVR on the Xfinity app of the first one, but I can't figure out how to Xfinity like blocks your screen recording. So you can't screen record it. If anyone knows how to bypass that so I can have this downloaded so I can like send it to my family and stuff like let me know. And then the second one, I don't even have it recorded. So I don't know how to find like Nesson's archives of their pregame shows. It's probably not available to the public. We may just have to talk to Nesson about it. See if they'll, yeah. maybe that's what I'll do. I'll send, I'll look up a contact. And just if you're, uh, if you're able to get this screen recording in a good way, we will give you like the firmest handshake you've ever had. Oh, uh, the absolute firmest virtual handshake. I mean, you can even give Pat a hug and get a real close-up feel of his guns. There they are. Oh, yeah. Bring it, <laughs> baby. Bring it. How welcoming. <laughs> it's very welcoming. <laughs> but, yeah, that was super cool. Uh, very, like, almost like a pinch-me moment to, like, see yourself on Nesson on the pregame show. So that was, like, yeah. like I, I don't take any of this stuff for granted. Like, everything that this that doing this podcast all these opportunities that we've had i don't take it for granted even for a second so it's been awesome i can confirm gordo behind the scenes every day in fort Myers was like this is crazy so he really does not take it for granted i appreciate that i try not to either i but i also try to i try to do like that like act like you belong thing even though oh, you got it. the imposter syndrome is just like screaming at me but i'm like no no i'm cool i belong here but that's the thing is like all of us do like we do belong it's just like this is kind of the first time it's happening so it's like surreal in a way because you've been watching these people for so long and but like it's like it's not like we don't belong we very much do i'm excited for pat to get to do some of these uh interview activations that'll be too at fenway with the little mini mic big time we are we're like what six weeks away six uh, weeks away i'm i'm there Oh, right. I was like, Pat, this, yeah. the home opener is like, yeah, soon. no, 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 I'm there. I feel like fucking, everybody, oh, we're over five minutes. Perfect. I feel like fucking AJ Hawk sometimes. Like people just see my face on a video. Like, this doesn't <sighs> even exist. No, you, you're not soulless enough. You have to be like. Yeah, AJ Hawk doesn't move. He's not real. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> he yeah. a cigar every like couple seconds. Oh, true, true. Yeah, you got to have a cigar handy. Like he's won something. Every, every episode he's like, we did it. Ooh. <laughs> I'm glad people are calling him out because I, I used to watch that show and be like, what does that guy do? He just, yeah. <laughs> now like everyone collectively is like, what does he do? You know how much money he probably gets paid to deadpan into a camera like that? And so oh, it's got like, what a gig. They must have gotten paid so much money from, actually, I'm pretty sure they have like that. The confirmed amount is out there that they got paid by ESPN and it's crazy. I forget what it is, but I'm pretty sure they yeah, got paid. It was a lot of zeros. Yeah. Shall we uh, jump into some opening day Sox Mariners series split? Should have been a three out of four, but I mean we can we can start with the good because the Sox starting rotation, and we had seen some hints that this could be in the works in spring training just because guys looked good, their velocity was up, like a lot of guys are developing new pitches. Like I'm looking at Garrett Whitlock when I say that. Uh, Brian Bayo working on that slider. Like we, we've been talking about these guys' developments, and I know we guys talk about that every year, but it felt for real with the Red Sox guys this year, and especially under Andrew Bailey, who I know like we've had – I don't want to say our doubts because it's not a doubt, but it's like a how much impact can a new pitching coach really have. But the proof is right, really yeah. in the pudding. I'm going to I'm gonna pull up the stats on this real quick. They The Sox starting pitchers, but the what they did do, they all went at least five innings. They all walked one or fewer batters, and it really was just one total walk. Cutter walked one guy at the very end. They all allowed two runs or less. They, the four of them combined had a 1-6-4 ERA, 27 strikeouts, and just one walk. They, they split this series, but in no way, shape, or form was it due to the thing that most people, most fans in Red Sox Nation pegged to be the biggest weakness, which was the starting rotation. I mean – 
if I told you those numbers before the series, I think both of you would laugh. Like, oh yeah, they're not going to walk anybody until game three of the starters. And they're like, could you, could you have, and I don't want to be dramatic. It's four games. Could you have possibly envisioned a more encouraging start from the starting pitchers? Like no. that was like watching a different group of guys. Like Bayo was good last year at times. So was Pavetta, I guess. And Cutter, but like, not like it that. It looked different though. It looked yeah, different. They were, that. they all had their moments last year and they were all pretty good, but this, this was different. Pavetta, especially. You, I have to. I have to put oh, him man. a little bit above what, the ten strikeouts. His pitches. He was fooling the ump. The ump went up and apologized to him after the second inning. Was like, "Sorry, man, I missed that." And Pavetta was cool about it. I love when umps do that. By the way, that's like respect. Everyone makes mistakes. But man, his pitches were moving all over the place. His fastball looked good. I like. And that that was my big concern for the season was Pavetta. And I'm sitting there like laughing at myself. I doubted this guy. Shame on me. But God. Damn, man. All four of them. Woo, and we haven't even seen Hauk yet. We'll talk about yeah. that. One thing, too, that like you can just see Bailey's like fingerprints all over it. They're pitching everyone backwards. Every pitch yes. is starting with an off speed. And the one thing that I love, which Dave Bush never, ever did, I would be so curious to see the splits on what pitches were thrown on full counts this series. I don't think I saw a full, a full count fastball. I mean, all of them there really weren't many fast four seam fastballs at all. Every fastball it, it, that was, thrown was like a cutter, a sinker, or a two seam. There were last like, year, no it felt like every time the count was full or every time it was the uh, two two, whatever, they were just pumping fastball. If you're a hitter up there and you, but year, last year, you could kind of be like probably like a 75% chance to get a fastball right now. You don't have that anymore. And now that the rotation's actual pitches are moving like they are, you're up there blind in a full count. It's either best case scenario, you lay off an enticing pitch and you walk. Worst case scenario is you guess heater and you get a curve in the dirt. That is what the walks and then pitching backwards and relying on the off-speed stuff stood out to me all weekend, and I love what I see. I mean, it's crazy because we talked all off-season. And first off, Pavetta, I think through about half – Four seamers last year, and it was down to about 30% in his first start. Cutter Crawford, we talked all offseason about how his fastball, like how who who said it? It was like one of it was one of the reputable baseball publications said oh, like that the it, ride on his fastball or something. It's like similar to Garrett Cole. Like pe yeah. people were pumping up his fastball all offseason, and he basically like pitched sweeper, cutter, four seam. Like that was kind of that was kind of the order of operation there. And the fastball caught up a little bit at the end. But it was he was basically using the fastball as a pitch to like, oh, you're sitting sweeper. I'm gonna blow the shit right by your fucking face. Yeah. I um by the way, on, on the topic of cutter, not not to change the subject, but um, oh wow. Okay, let's read this first. Uh JP Long, Sox notes, shout out JP. Um Red Sox opponent batting average was 178 this series, first in the majors, 0. 0.82 whip, first in the majors. 7.5 K to walk ratio, first in the majors. ERA was 2.04, uh, second in the majors, and then 11.46 K through nine, second in the majors. That is good for a total of 35.1 innings pitched, 45 Ks, six walks, eight earned runs, 23 hits. Wow. And that's, and that they did that. And obviously, you're not, when you're pitching, you're not facing the other pitchers, but like it does feel noteworthy that they're going up against, in my opinion, the best starting rotation in baseball facing three aces and like a, a front of the road, like I would say what, like a, why am I forgetting his name? Who the hell did they face today? Bryce, Bryce Miller. Miller. God, Bryce Isn't Miller's it? Bryce Miller's like a, at worst, a number three in most rotations, probably like yeah. a number two in a lot of them. Oh yeah. He's like, he could be a one he, in rotations. His, I mean, stuff, he his stuff today was ridiculous. Like it, yeah. it, he, he let up the runs cause Valdez got him, but like the first two innings, I was thinking, about, I was like, how the hell are the Red Sox going to get to this fucking guy? But yeah, I mean, dude, the Mariners pitchers, that's how I felt with Castillo after that first inning of opening day. Oh, my God, that was nasty. He destroyed the Red Sox in the first yeah. inning. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, yeah. Oh, God, it's going to be one of those games. He's so locked in. And uh, but you know who got him? But you know who got him is the best hitter on the damn team is Rafi Devers. And none of us picked him for the crystal bomb. You're 
all trying to be all cool, picking all these different guys. But in the end, it was it was Devers that that gets the first bomb of the year. Um, that he like missed it. He like missed that pitch, and it still went like four hundred and twenty something feet. Like it was like not his best swing. He didn't make perfect contact. Not a way over the wall too. He's the best. Yeah, the most fun hitter to watch. Whoops! I hit it four hundred something feet the other way. Yeah, that like yeah. happens like all the time. <laughs> yeah, like he looked at it kind of like oh oh. If you look at his face, his expression changes after he hits it. But um, yeah, obviously, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be that. Well, they didn't have Devers for the middle two games. They would have won, but like you lose by one. Both those games, you win the other two games by more than one. Where Devers is, and I'm just saying, it no, it's a thing. And then, it's a but thing. you also factor in too. They didn't have Kenley either. Like you yeah. had those two. That four game series might be a three one or a four zero sweep. Well, yeah, it definitely it definitely should have at minimum been a three one series win just because there's no way they should have lost with a three to one lead in the tenth in game three. But to be honest with you, even though I, I agree with you, like if they'd had Devers and Kenley Jansen available for those games, like yeah, they probably won at least three. I was a little bit concerned, not just not just in the middle two games, but overall, pretty much outside of opening day about the offense. Like they went 14 innings in a row without scoring a run between I want to say the ninth inning of game one and then all of game two and then like the first half or so of game three they didn't score a single run yeah and it's and it's in large part because two of their best players didn't hit pretty much the entire series and like obviously we expect Tristan Casas to not do that but Trevor Story we hope is going to be better than that but we don't know so when Story goes like over or he had one hit until like the final his final two at bats of the, of the final game he had a couple of hits there but he was i mean he looked uncomfortable most of the series it just did it, it wasn't and what his one hit was like an infield hit too just he didn't look yeah. very good it's hard to say like it's hard to learn much from that series because on one hand like you're facing arguably the best rotation in baseball i would put them number one but on the other hand, you can't just give a guy like give everybody a pass because you're facing good pitching. It's kind of like the converse of what we're going to deal with uh, in Oakland. Everything good they do, everyone will say, "Well, it's just Oakland," and everything yep. bad they do gets multiplied by two. And yeah. the, the Mariners version, like Devers hitting that home run, and it was off of Castillo, extra special. So I want to talk a little bit of, though about. I don't know if I don't know. The if obviously we're not going to name an MVP of a series the Sox didn't win, but if you had to look at one player that just like stood out throughout the series, it has to be Tyler O'Neill, making yeah. his Red Sox debut, starting three of the four games, and he even came in and got intentionally walked in the game he didn't start. He he had two home runs. With him, it like he's so fucking jacked. That it basically like the ball comes, he hits the ball, and as long as it is coming off the bat at the right angle, it's just gonna go. Yeah. He's a guy that just keep him healthy, which obviously is a big ass considering his career. But like if he if he stays healthy, he could be pretty good. And to be honest with you, potentially, as Coop's putting in our chat, a series savior because Joely Rodriguez in that opening day game. Let up that two-run homer. All of a sudden, it's a one-run game. And then immediately, when you come back from the commercial break, Tyler O'Neill's putting one in the seats and setting the record for most consecutive opening days with a home run with five, which is... Nesson! Nesson! Oh, yeah, How Nesson. How do you miss that? How do you miss that? I, Dave O'Brien was pissed, and I don't blame him. He. So if you didn't watch, on the Red Sox broadcast on Nesson, you it cuts back from commercial like Gordo said, and you see Tyler O'Neill hit the ball, goes over the fence. He's screaming, going around the bases, but there's all you hear is the ballpark ambiance. You don't yeah, hear it. All from the announcer. Like it was just nothing. And then they come on like Yuke's laughing. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "Oh, we would have loved to call that, but our mics were off." And you know it happens in in live broadcasting, like. um I, it, it, people would be surprised how many things go wrong during a live broadcast that you you don't notice, but that was like that was pretty egregious. So I feel bad for whoever made the mistake. They definitely didn't mean to do it. Hopefully they're not in too much trouble. But um, I saw MLB.com overlaid. The oh, they w changed it all up. 
Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was good. So, yeah. man, I can't believe they missed that call. That was kind of like, it was funny. It was like, it was a missed opportunity, but you can laugh at it in the end because you can just overlay uh, Will Fleming, his call. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Pat, 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 did any, anyone that we haven't talked about yet, did anyone stand out to you in this series? Like, who do you want to highlight? Two people. Let's hear it. Weissert and Slayton. Yeah, that bullpen. Both of those playing. guys, for guys who, you know, in terms of the bullpen, who are kind of on that lower end coming into the season, looked phenomenal. Disregard the Julio Rodriguez at bat. That was a mess that he had to mop up. When he was given his own innings, it, like no, nothing inherited, nothing on the line, Slayton came in and absolutely mowed down. In Weiser, I don't know how we got Greg Weiser from the Yankees. Yeah. He's throwing frisbees out there. They got him because they gave up Verdugo, who's started off really fun, and they're really loving him in New York. We know how that goes. Mm, give it a month. Hot start, hot start Verdugo. It wasn't even like the main – like that deal was all about Richard Fitz, and it's just like, yeah, we'll take Greg Weiser too, I guess. And it's like – the Red Sox clearly were like, oh, no, 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 we got to get this guy. And they they definitely were, were on the phone with Brian Cash and were like, hey, yeah, this deal could get done, but can you throw in that that up and down minor league reliever that you guys like sometimes yeah. have on your team and sometimes don't? And the Yankees were like, Weissert, the guy with the with the mustache? And Presley was like, yeah, yeah, the, the big dude with the mustache. Yeah, we, I don't know. Yeah, throw him in. And Cash was like, no, sure. Sure thing, man. Did you know? Did you be honest? Because I didn't. Did you guys know he threw like 96 as well? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was like low 90s, like kind of a junk baller kind of dude. I didn't realize he pumped mid to high 90s. Like, where was I? What did I do? I, I just remember him because, or at the time I remembered him when they traded for him, I remembered that they, he got called up like right before a Red Sox Yankees series. And I was like looking him up just to see like how good he was and his minor league stats were like completely insane. And I saw like these videos of him throwing like Frisbee sliders and he got in a game at some point against the Red Sox. And it's like, Holy crap. Like, look at this guy, even though like his major league stats weren't that good, but you can see like stuff is stuff. Like when a guy throws yeah. sliders like that, that look like it's a fucking boomerang. Like, I don't be going from Whitlock to Weissert, by the way, or going from yeah. anyone to Weissert, like yeah. oh, the Yankees guys. I mean, Whitlock to Weissert. Oh yeah. Oh, one guy the Yankees gave up on to another guy the Yankees gave up on. Uh, keep going. Joely Rodriguez, a former Yankee, too. All right, that's enough. What do I have to talk about? <laughs> that's so annoying, man. All right, so uh, another another explanation from me. We had a great little social activation with Joely down in Fort Myers, and we have this video of him going, sorry. Oh, and it's so We want to post it so bad to celebrate a good outing, and he's what, over. Uh, including the spring training games, over, over like four, over yeah. four if you count that Texas spring training game, over Andrew three if you count the regular season. It's t it's too bad because today he actually probably would have gotten it done. But oh, the, that was bullshit. The ump, like yeah. he struck him out three bad different luck, times. He even had bad luck last night. I, I I was ripping him, I know, on Twitter and everything, but he got babipped pretty bad with two of those uh, two plays. One yeah. was a hit. One was an RBI that was like to Valdez of course a ground ball and he can't yeah, but get him he, but he did allow his one that out that he did get was like a screaming line drive right up the middle yes. they just had a defender there so it's like was he it? got unlucky oh, yeah. a couple times and then it's yes. like oh we'll take one back it's give it yeah. take. but I agree though that that Luke Rayleigh hit that broken bat bloop Ugh, to start yeah. the inning that drove you in the first you can't do anything run. about that that and that set the tone for the entire inning too like it's just like a broken bat it went high in the air like anywhere else in the field that thing gets caught I just, yeah, I yeah, we want to post that goddamn video. Like, I swear to God, like, I feel like he's like, going to get DFA'd, and we're just going to be sitting on that beautiful, beautiful video. I guess if he gets DFA'd, we'll we'll post it in honor of the DFA. But like, I want I want to post it because he like got out of an inning with like a lefty, and and they're up by a run. It's like everyone's like scared because yeah. Joelle's coming, and it's like you doubted me. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. And he slams his glove and screams, "Hell yeah!" Points. Hell to yeah, yeah, bro. That's what we love. We love Joelle out here. Sammy, any anyone that you want to highlight from this series? Uh, yeah, it's the Don Rafaela. Oh my God, he um. Let me let me pull up the numbies over here. Four hits and 12 at-bats. I think the biggest 
hit, of course, was that triple. It was a double oh, yeah. that he turned into a triple. Uh, Canzone, the Seattle left fielder, kind of dogged it in left. Sedan pulled up at second, kept going, and then turned on the Jets, slid into third. I did one of those uh, no, 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 no things when he was doing it, and then he slides in safe, and I was happily wrong to be yelling no at the TV. So uh, just absolute electric factory. I love how athletic and quick these Red Sox seem early on. Guys like Sedan, uh, Story, Duran, O'Neal could go on. Like, just athletic. And, uh, yeah, Sedan, just a great example of that these first few games. He had a, uh, a diving catch in center field, game three. And then he had yeah. another kind of uh, – it wasn't a diving catch, but he had to he'd cover a lot of ground. And I feel like those are those are nothing. Those are nothing for him. Like, that was, that was just a preview of some of the crazy catches we're going to see for him. And, man – how good does it feel just knowing he's in center field? Knowing that anything that gets hit out there is probably going to get caught. It reminds me of when Jackie was out there. Yeah, the combo of that and having Story at short. And I know we have a we have a little bit of like uh, with Valdez at second right now. And like we'll see when Grissom comes back. So, but like he's been they, okay, Valdez. Yeah, no, he hasn't. Yeah, no. I, I still like get the, uh, but it's not like he's like done anything this year to deserve it. But yeah, it's kind of it's like with Devers. Like I'm not worried yeah. when a ball is hit to him until he makes the mistake, and then yeah. I'm like, oh god, here comes another. Here comes another. As yeah. much as I, you know, like how much I don't believe in Devers' defense, I've been on record a million times saying that it's like after he makes an error, which is when I start worrying because yeah. they. I got worried. The only time I got worried about Valdez at second was I think it was the first inning of opening day. He had. I th- it looked slow motion, the double play transfer on the feed from Story. And I was like, oh, get yeah. it out! <laughs> it felt like Story kind of hummed it at his stomach on that one. Yeah. But like, yeah, he, but like, they he got it done. It, and then you just see like the glove turn and then the hand grab the ball and then him load up. And I'm like, just fucking throw it, just fucking throw it, just yeah. fucking throw it. How about the one, someone on the Mariners hit the ball up the middle to Valdez's, uh, to his right. And Valdez backhands it and tries to no look throw it to Casas, and it wasn't even in the same. <laughs> that was like it wasn't an error or anything, but like just brutal. Was there was there any? There was one. Reyes had that ball that he threw away, and that led to the one unearned run that Cutter allowed uh, in Game Three. Was there any other Will error you're... that the Red Sox made? Oh, Will you're... Will you're in right. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. Was okay. Any... Yeah, I don't know if that's technically – was that ruled an error? It should be. Yeah, it had it to was. be, yeah, because the was. guy got to second. It was. That, that was the worst. Single. That whole, <coughs> excuse me. That whole game three was kind of like, who do we blame here? Well, yeah, had can, I ask you, can I ask you guys a question here? Yeah. If With the roster as it stands, so, like, you can't say Bernardino should be on the team. That's not what I'm asking here. In that spot, your options were – Weissert was at 19 pitches, so you could leave him in. Jansen is unavailable. Winkowski is unavailable after having thrown two the inning or the day before. So it's either leave Weissert in, you go to Joelli the lefty, you go to Slayton for his big league debut, or you go to Chase Anderson, who's Chase Anderson. Do you think Alex Cora made the right decision in that moment to go to Joelli? I want to go to Pat first on this one. Yeah, so I don't blame him whatsoever. If we're going for Joelli. There were like Core said it. There was a pocket of lefties there. That's Joelli's job is to do go out and handle that. So like I get the rationale, and I'm not mad that Core picked Joelli for that kind of spot. Like that's why he's on the roster. That's why having a lefty is valuable for those matchups. That being said, in hindsight, would you have maybe said like maybe the splits weren't that different? And you try Slayton. In hindsight, now that we've seen Slayton, I feel like it's kind of, it's cheap to say you should have gone Slayton. But no, no, I get why he went to Joelli. And Joelli just absolutely has to get that done. That's He is the lone lefty on the team. He's going to be in a lot of those spots. He's got to handle that shit or Bernie's going to be up very soon. I think that's what people need to get through their heads because I saw so many people questioning Cora. And yeah, spoiler, spoiler alert, I thought Cora made the right decision for that moment, understanding who's unavailable. But yeah, Joelli's on this team and it's not as a mop-up guy. He is the one lefty. So when there's a pocket of lefties and they're like bottom of the order lefties and your studs are unavailable and you're picking between those guys, 
Like, I agree, Pat. Now having seen Slayton, you obviously trust him. But in that spot, do you want a guy's big league debut to be in that spot? No. So, like, you go for the lefty against the lefties and, like, it, it didn't work. And, like, that sucks. And, like, we'll talk a, a, a million times over about the roster construction and how Brennan Bernardino should be on this team. But understanding what the roster is, I thought it was the right call to go to Joely as much as it sucked. Another thing, too, is people are like, like, yeah, you can point out and say that Slayton ended up making his debut in that spot anyways. But, that's, like, it doesn't not, matter. Like, Joely, yeah, no, you... That was like a last as, resort. If you're Alex Cora, you have belief that, okay, my veteran lefty reliever can get out the bottom of the order lefties on a lackluster lineup or, like, league average lineup. That's not a tall task. So Cora was 1,000% in the right. He made the right choice. It didn't work out, but that's not Cora's fault. Sammy, do you agree with us, or are you on another side of this one? Yeah, I completely agree. Joely is on the roster. He has to pitch. We saw these guys get burnt out last year. You can't be using guys on, you know, in high leverage spots on back-to-back -back nights or stretching guys beyond what they're used to three games into the season. That's not a good formula for long-term success. So if Joel is going to be on this roster, which is an entire different story, whether he should or shouldn't be, if he's going to be on the roster, he has to be able to get those guys out. Especially, it's the bottom of Seattle's order. It's not a yeah you're not facing the Braves lineup. You're facing the Mariners lineup. They they succeed with their pitching, not their hitting. So if you can't get what was it seven or eight nine one, right seven eight nine or eight it might nine have been one. seven eight nine. Regardless, oh, was, eh, yeah, it was Rayleigh. Rayleigh Crawford was in there. Rayleigh, Urias, someone else, Crawford. And then or, they right? yanked him. And then was they yanked Kanzoni? him with J Rod. Oh, Rayleigh, Urias. What Rojas, about Rojas? Rojas and Rojas, then yes. Crawford. Regardless, none of those guys, aside from Crawford, the leadoff man, are scary hitters. Those are guys that you should, as a left handed reliever, buzz through those guys. That's where you're getting paid for. So as much as we all like Joely, he was great to us in Fort Myers. You got to get the job done there, man. Or like Pat said, Bernardino is going to be up here quickly. So, yep. um, yeah, need to see more from him. Good improvement today in game four. I know he didn't technically get the job done, but he threw strike three, I think, two times to his last batter. So uh, I'll give him a give him a W for that last outing. He he was fine. Yeah, you got two pop ups like we'll we'll take it. I mean, overall. I, Sammy, you commented on this. Uh, there was like a tweet that was like the Red, Red Sox bullpen is like on like whatever. It was before the fourth game, but at the time it was like nine innings, five runs. And it was like, I think all of those were Joely's responsibility, even though I think technically one of them belonged to Campbell, but it was just because he like let up a single and then Joely let up a homer. Bullpen, yeah. this series, and I expect for the rest of the season, absolutely nails. Like I am so goddamn excited about what we have in this bullpen to watch. And it's like, all guys outside of, yeah, I guess Kenley and Martin are expiring, but like they've got guys like for days that they're mm -hmm. like, even when those guys are gone next year or whenever. And like, obviously we've got Liam Hendricks and Michael Fulmer coming. They've got guys that are under control and that you can trust that can face both lefties and righties. Like it's exciting. They put it together, man. I don't know. They just like sneakily did it. They're like, yeah, Luis Arias, you'll go for one. Alex Verdugo, you'll go for one. We'll rule like five, pick said, this guy. It's just bro, like they, brought, like you said, they got they got two all-star closers on the mend that they're going to have for next year, too. So yeah. that's pretty good stuff. By the way, yes, Michael Fulmer is an all-star. I checked today. So Ricky two all-star closers. Anything else before uh, before we preview the next series? I guess the last thing I just have is I, I thought that the pitching that we saw in large part is a testament. Like, we, do you guys remember, like, it's still February and like we see like people haven't even reported for pitchers and catchers yet yeah. on other teams and like Whitlock's throwing like multiple innings and these guys are like way ahead of schedule. Like I, I think the pitching that we saw this week, this weekend was a testament to Alex Cora and the staff getting these guys ready to go for the season. Like this obviously it's like a full, it's not a sprint, it's a 162 game marathon, but I think this organization knows that they need to get off to a good start in order to stay afloat because you're not going to like, you're not going to play like 95 win pace baseball to catch up, to make sure you end up at 85 wins. Like you need to play like 90 win pace while everyone else is ramping up. And that, that allows you to kind of ease down the stretch when everyone else yeah. is probably better than you. 
But like now you're more prepared than everyone else. So you're going to win these games early. I hope, I hope we see that happen with Oakland and uh, the angels and maybe Baltimore after that. Cook, but anything else before we go to Oakland guys? Nope. 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 I'm feeling very encouraged by this two game split. Oh, wait. Yeah. Fucking nailed it. Win, loss, loss, win. Oh, true, true. I meant to start with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're keeping track. We're keeping score. Uh, before the series, we did series predictions. Sammy and Pat both had a split. I had them taking three out of four. So they both get points. But Sammy, Sammy got the exact sequence of the games. So Sammy predicted that there would be a win on, on the first game and the fourth game. So he's going to get two points. Pat's going to get one. I'm going to get none for that. So, so that's what we're doing it. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do, you got to get the, the wins and losses correct. And then you get a bonus point if you guess the games, right? Yep. We'll okay. keep track. Good start. We'll keep track. Yeah. I'm, I'm a good amount behind Sammy, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get it right for Oakland. You guys, I'm going to have something up my butt for this one. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. Wow. Oakland time! <laughs> What's Gordo going to have up his butt for this game? Winning answer gets to keep it. <laughs> you guys are want to – no, I'm not, no, I'm not going to. Gordo right. has Reese McGuire up his butt. <laughs> <laughs> I've got – okay. Oakland Athletics. <laughs> They're one and three. They're coming off – What? Of, they won a game? They won yeah. today on a walk-off walk. <laughs> <laughs> Good for them, man. Yeah, man. They had that. They had a walk-off walk up their butt, and now they're one and three. <laughs> Is that what's up, Gordo's butt? If the Red Sox have if a they went on a walk-off walk, walk, any point this year, you get to choose what goes up. Anyway, let's do the, um, <laughs> let's do the preview. All right, game one. Tanner Houck versus Joe Boyle, a, a personal favorite of the Hebrew Hammer over here. Houck yes. has a, had a five. Actually, I think I have that ERA wrong. He had like an ERA over five, but that was like a 503. I wrote down 5-4, but I think that's wrong. He had a 2-4 ERA, something like that last year. He had a 2-4 ERA in the spring. Joe Boyle had a 1-6-9 ERA last year in his three total career games. This spring, he struggled to a 5-8-9. Game two. Brian Bayo versus Alex Wood. Brian Bayo went five innings, two earned runs in his first start. Alex Wood went three and a third, six earned on his opening day start. Game three, Nick Pavetta versus Ross Stripling. Nick Pavetta went six innings, one run. Stripling was five innings, five runs, four of which were earned. So, yeah, the, the A's, I guess, just decided to grab a couple of the crosstown guys from San Francisco and bring them over, and now that's who the Red Sox are going to face this series. Yeah. Um, well, I think people will really enjoy watching Joe Boyle. He's not a top pitching prospect or anything, but he has an 80 grade fastball. And if you're not familiar with the uh, grading system, it's a 20 to 80 scale. Don't ask me why, because I don't know, but that's how it works. 20 is the lowest, 80 is the highest. It's very, very rare to see 80s. I think like, I hate to use this guy as an example, but Wander Franco had like an 80 hit tool. And I can't really think of anyone else off the top of my head who had an 80. So mm. very, very rare. And uh, Joe Boyle has an 80 grade fastball, which it's like consistently triple digits. He's six foot seven, Southern kid, has no clue where his fastball is going. He walks the world. Um, but man, is he fun to watch. It's electric. And I hope, I hope he, uh, well, I don't want him to like do poorly, but I do want the Red Sox to beat him. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. It should be exciting. Yeah, no days off. We're, they're jumping right into the series. Uh, Players to watch for Oakland. J.D. Davis off to a good start. He has two homers. He has a 13-13 OPS. Uh, Estuary Ruiz was like, he wasn't even in the opening day lineup, but kind of like, really? they, yeah, dude, they they benched him. Like, he wasn't, he, I, he has a 12-32 OPS. He's like the fastest motherfucker in the league. But He's like, only had three at-bats. Is that it? Three at-bats? What are they doing? He's or is that coming into today? No, he... I don't know, man. Weird. I'll check. But yeah, he uh, he stole 67 bases last year. Why would you not play that guy? He's He has a tool that's good. That's more than most of the guys on the A's. Who's that guy? that Butler? They have a guy Butler, right? I think that's yeah, who they're well, trying to get in there. 
<clears throat> yeah, Lawrence Butler. So he kind of is like, hmm, kind of like Willier Abreu last year. Like not a top prospect, but a, a good prospect and just caught fire in the majors. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. He was sort of a guy that I was interested in. It took him like my last round of my fantasy draft just because he's a big dude with power. Interesting. Uh, he's struggling to start off this year, but he's a guy that could take you deep. So he's someone to watch for sure. Yeah. And the, the last guy I have as a guy to watch is Zach Geloff. He is who I see as their yeah. best player. He's struggling to start the series. He's got a 435 OPS. But last year was his rookie season. Had an 840 OPS in 69 games. So he's he's really good. Their second baseman, young kid, 24 years old. Uh, be careful with him. But anyone else you guys want to highlight on Oakland A's stacked roster? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Casey Miller. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nasty. Closer that dude now. is electric. <laughs> yeah. That's, he I guess is, that's their strength. He, closer. If you think Andres Munoz – throws a casual 100, wait until you see Mason Miller. Yeah. This kid is electric. He is so good. He's going to be like a legit back end of the bullpen closer in the league for a long time if he keeps developing the way that he has. He is very, very good. Um, I think another one that just – and to be honest, we're, we're really – we're really reaching the bottom of the barrel with We're some of the <laughs> this is this is far and away the worst team in major league baseball in my opinion so um yeah tough to find guys to watch but i think you got to credit uh rooker i'm not sure Gore, you didn't mention rooker yet no, right? I didn't. yeah Brent rooker yeah yeah, yeah a lot bombs. of strikeouts but 30 home runs last year oakland is an absolute graveyard for hitters so to hit 30 as an oakland a is pretty impressive i i would count that as 35 at fenway that's just the rules so 35 Fenway home runs for Brent Rooker last year. 30 Major League Baseball home runs. So he's a guy to watch. Not spectacular or anything. Like I said, a lot of strikeouts, but good power. Yeah, so there's your Oakland A's superstar players to watch on the stacked Oakland Athletics. Uh, Pat, what's it time for, Pat? It is time for... Drum roll, please. Our second edition of Crystal Bomb. Bomb it! Bomb it! For those of you who are not aware, let's go over the ground rules real quick. Every series, the three of us pick a player to hit a home run. The one stipulation is if you pick that player, for the next two series, that player is ineligible. So if that player hits a home run during the series, you get a point. We're keeping track all season long. Last series, Sammy took Tristan Casas. Eh. I took Sedan Rafaela. Eh. And Gordo took Tyler O'Neill. And he cashed in his one point. Two Tater Tyler. Let's go. So now, just to recap, I cannot pick Sedan. Gordo cannot pick Tyler O'Neill. And Sammy cannot pick Tristan Casas. The matchups this week are righty, lefty, righty. So choose wisely. Gordo. I'll take it first. I'm taking a guy who struggled a little bit in this series. He's going to need to get off the schneid a little bit in the second series. And no. I like the presence of a lefty up there. I think no. maybe game two is that is that one game where this guy might be able to pop off. So I'm going to go Trevor Story. Damn it. I, I, I'm watching you, Trevor Story. I want to see that first home run in Oakland. Late night. Don't, don't make me wait till the 3.30 game. Late night. Put one out. Come on, man. That was my pick. You can pick him too. No, 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 no. I am I good to go? Can I go next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna ride the hot bat. I'm taking Tyler O'Neill, taking a page out of Gordo's book. So stay hot. You stole my Trevor Story pick. I'm gonna steal your old pick. This is great because if Story does hit, I can just text you and be like, that was gonna be my pick too. No, because you could have made it. I'll, that's, that's what I'll I, tell that's you. That's what I can do because I let Gordo go first last time. He swiped Tyler O'Neill from me. Who do you, you take that? that? I am going with, and I'll be the first one to take him this season. I'm going Ralphiel Devers. I need to get on the board. You nervous yes. he's going to miss any games, though? No, I'm not. He's hitting the ball well. He is. He is. Today, he yeah. was crushing the ball. I like to get the ball today. I think yeah. that shoulder's fine. It's actually a smart time to pick him because I feel like 
it's it, it's tough to hit a home run in Oakland. Also, people don't know this if you haven't been there. In addition to being huge with a ton of foul territory, it's also cold as fuck in that ballpark. It's not like SoCal. That's Northern California. So it gets to like, you know, like 50s and 40s, sometimes in the 30s. And it's windy too. So good luck hitting the ball out there. My muscular Canadian pal Tyler O'Neill will do it. Okay, so we've got... I took Story, Sammy took Tyler O'Neill, Pat took Rafi Devers. So we've got some heavy hitters here. No one took Tristan Casas. Looks a little bit uncomfortable at the plate right now. They threw him all sliders. Like it was, it was like that Houston series. You remember that, like in 2021, where Houston yeah. threw Rafi. Was it all breaking balls or all fast? Yeah. It was all fastballs. Right? All fastballs. High all fastballs. F- yeah. And then the Yankees tried to do it like a week later, and he had it entirely figured out, and he just yeah. crushed it every single also, time. Didn't help that Tristan got rung up in an at-bat where he literally did not see a strike. Oh, that was brutal. And a big spot, too. That was in the ninth inning to lead yeah. off an inning in a one-run yeah. deficit, and then that was just that from there. But, yeah, yeah no Costas here. I'll probably take one of him or Devers next against the Angels. I could totally – like, I'm just trying to visualize, like, who's hitting a home or where. For whatever reason, I picture Story hitting one where everything's green, and I can picture Rafi and Costas going deep when everything's red. We'll, we'll, we'll look into that next week, but let's let's do some series predictions here. What, Sammy? I visualize it. You want to do uh, predictions or? Um, okay, we'll do yeah, predictions we'll do and then we'll yeah, well then we'll run we'll run. We'll to do you. it up. We'll do it up. Yeah, we'll do it up at the end. Um, series predictions. We went over the matchups. We highlighted some players. We know the A's aren't very good. We know that the Red Sox coming into the season not expected to do a lot, but saw some good things with especially with the pitching. Some. Lesser good things with the offense, but certainly some potential uh, room for growth there with some of the better hitters not doing a whole lot. Pat, I'm going to kick to you to go first. Predict the series. Three games. Sox A's. What do you got? Clean sweep. Clean I'm going. Sweep. I And I think that the pitching, granted, Oakland's lineup is not nearly as the at the same caliber of Seattle, but I think the starting pitching keeps on rolling. I'm ve- Now that I've seen the first four, I am very curious to see what Tanner Houck looks like now. Yeah, me too. I'm excited, him. man. I'm excited. And then you get Bayo and Pavetta, who absolutely killed it in Seattle. I think those two, I think the whole everything. I think the starting pitcher keeps going. I think the bullpen holds up. I think, fingers crossed, knock on wood, Story and Casas get cooking. We saw Story kind of get going today. He had some two loud contact singles. The defenses look great. Tristan, the eye, like his eye is still there. He is having very good at bats. They're just not turning out in hits. I think that changes this week, this upcoming series as well. So I'm going clean sweep 3 0. So they, in the, in the world that Pat visualizes, the Red Sox will head to LA to play the Angels at five and two. Sammy, what do you got? I mean, you got to go sweep, right? You can't. How could, how could you? This this A's team, and I'm not being dramatic. This is not an exaggeration. These guys very well could set the record for the most losses in an MLB season. They are so unbelievably bad. It's embarrassing. Like I, I don't know. I can't believe what that owner has done to that team. It makes our issues with the Fenway Sports Group look like nothing. It's just, it's sad. I feel bad for the fans. Um, I, I, like I mentioned, I've lived out there. I know that fan base. I really like them. They're cool people. Uh, and they do show up. As you saw, they protest. They had thousands of people in the parking lot for a protest. They're just not going to go to the game. Um, so yeah, sad situation. However, Red Sox are going to go into Oakland, kick the crap out of them three times. And I feel pretty good about that, especially after what we saw. So, uh, same as Pat clean sweep. Okay. I'm I'm not gonna go sweep. I'm not gonna do it. Um, I like a lot of what I've seen with the Red Sox, but I am still a little bit wary of the offense. And I could see them dropping that second game with a lefty on the mound. Bayo got hit a little bit in Oakland last year. I know that one was during the day, and I know that I'm pretty sure this second game we'll have to verify, but I'm pretty sure it's like a 9:40 start. So it's, it's the nightest of night. That's that's the beauty of him pitching in Seattle on a 10 p.m. start. You can't get more night than than a 10 p.m. start. So 
But I, I still I, – I think the Sox can have a little bit of trouble with the lefty, with this team being, like, very left-hand happy. But, yeah, I'll go with I'll go with two out of three with them taking the first. I think Hauk pitches well. I think Pavetta goes, like, fucking eight scores or eight innings, one or two runs or something. I think he kills them in the final game. But second game, I could see them losing, like, a – two to one annoying game kind of like what they were losing this one so i'll go i'll go two out of three with them losing the middle game and if, if that sequence goes right give me two points but i hope i'm wrong i hope you guys are right wasn't wasn't the game in oakland last year when pavetta had that ridiculous relief appearance yeah i'm pretty sure it was and he wait a minute eight so it's i like, just it's like, i just thought of something you guys predicted sweeps which means you're predicting the exact se- sequence of games. Yeah. We have to get rid of that two point thing. Because then, if, because then he incentivizes it, you to predict sweeps or it, no sweeps. In all seriousness, though, how often are we going to confidently call a sweep this season? Yeah, I feel like sweeps are super unlikely, though. That's like the hardest, like the same team winning all three games. Hmm. I guess you kind of are putting all your eggs in the basket. Screw it. We'll keep yeah. it. We'll keep it. But if, if they sweep, I'm 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 coming after you guys. I'm gonna like I'm How about, investigating the shit. Although okay. I, I hope you're right. I don't care. I'd rather they win the games than get the points. Although any, I want to be right. If there are any rule changes, we will alert people via social media on rule changes. But I think we'll keep it for now. We can tweak it if we need to, but it's an evolving game. The the deal here is if they sweep and you guys both get two points, we're getting rid of the rule. If they don't sweep and you guys don't get two points, we're keeping it. What did deal. you what'd you pick? I predicted two out of three with them losing the middle game. Okay. I think if they lose a game, it would be, wouldn't you pick the day game? Cause it would be like a change of. I pace thought about it. I thought about it, but I'm pretty confident in Pavetta and I didn't, I, I wanted to target the lefty. Get away day. Oh, actually they do have an off day the following day. So maybe they unload the bullpen a little bit more now, nah, but it's game. It's like game six. I don't know. I don't know. This is a tough call. A lot of things to think about. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, a lot of shit depends on how the rest of the series goes. But before we, before we jump to enough said, Sammy, what's the time for chief? Yeah. This is a segment with no losers, only winners. It's guys being dudes. And in this segment, we, uh, we quite simply, we recall a former Red Sox player who also played for, in this case, the Oakland A's. So I will start with uh, Pat because I feel like Pat really likes this game. I love this game. I'm going Fernando Abad. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Fernando, what, what trade was that? That was um. That Pat was Light. Pat Light. Oh, right, right, right. Jeez. I ugh. I thought Abad was going to be good. But he, Me it's too. Tough. With a pun last he name and pun in your last name, tough to succeed in Boston like that. Yeah, there were a bunch that came to mind, but going good old Fernando. Okay, that was a painful memory. Gordo, who you got? Mine, mine's a little, a little bit better of a player though. He didn't play here in particularly good seasons, at least in Boston. I'm gonna go Marco Scudero. Oh, he had a good career. He did a surprisingly good career. He did make an All Star team. For the first time at age 37 with the San Francisco Giants in a year that was not as good as the year he had before now that I'm looking at it, even though he only played six, actually no 2012 yeah eh, it was okay he got traded to San Francisco at the end and he was good at the end multiple but, rings right guy who has won the World Series more than once he if he was the it were, they were the even years right so he was on the Giants in 12 and 14 actually he only played five games in 14 so maybe Still just like one maybe. Still technically a ring. If uh, God, who's the guy? Rob tweeted about him today. We talked about him. Oh, Villanueva. Yeah. No, close though. No, Villarreal. 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 Villarreal yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, if he gets a ring for walking in the only the winning run and the only batter he faced, anyone gets a ring for anything. But yeah, Marco Scudero, two years with the Red Sox. He was way better than I expected him to be. When he came here, I thought he was just some schmuck, and they they had had so many stopgap shortstops after Nomar and oh, like yeah. Scudero was such a nice guy to fill in there. And then they let him go. And I forget who they brought in after because Scudero, I want to say followed Lugo who was not particularly good. Who came? Alex Gonzalez was in there for a second, but whoever they had after Scudero. Oh, was nah, I don't know who was 12. Steven drew was 13. There was someone in the middle there. Avilas. It was Avilas. Oh, I liked him. Trivia yeah. question. Who did 
the Red Sox trade Mike Avila's away for? Ooh, it was was it? Uh, it did. No, it's to the Royals, right? Or do we get Mike Avila's from the Royals? They got him from the Royals. Actually, do I have this wrong? Okay. I might have this wrong. How dare you? Uh, no, I'm right. I'm right. Who did they trade? Yes. They traded Mike Avila's for. This is a trick question. That's my hint. It's a trick question. So he came back to the Red Sox. They no, they <laughs> traded him away. He did not come back after the trade. Yeah, you said it's a trick question, so I I thought maybe like he came back to the Red Sox and ended up playing for them more than we would. Um, no, but he I don't did know not... what position. <laughs> that would give it away. Did the guy we traded ever play a major league game for the Red Sox prior to the trade? I don't think the guy they traded him for played a major league game for the Red Sox before or after the trade. A position okay. would give it away. All right, who is it? You want it? Pat? You want you give up? You want it? No, give me a second. Your I'm... head is going in the wrong way. If you're, you have to, you have, you're, you're either gonna have to know it or you're not gonna know it. Five seconds. Four, yeah, no, three. give it to me. You yeah. want it? Yeah. They traded him to the Toronto Blue Jays for John Farrell. Oh, that's why it would have given it away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, that worked. They got a ring out of that. Yeah, can't complain. But yeah, so Mike Avila, or God, no, was not Mike Avila's, and I don't think he ever played for Oakland. So Scoots. Marco Scudero is my is my guys being dudes. I don't know what it, I don't know what it's called. Whatever, guys, guys being, being dudes. Marco dude. Scudero. Who's yours, Sammy? I need to hear it. I got a weird one because this guy is like remembered as a Red Sox player, <clears throat> but he did have a brief stint with the Oakland A's. Hideki Okajima, who Ooh, good one, randomly pitched for them. I don't think he pitched for the A's very long. I feel like most people won't will be surprised to learn that he pitched for the A's, but he did. He pitched five games, four innings <laughs> in 2013 after taking an entire year off. He tried to make a comeback. The A's were like, sure, man, give it a go. And uh did not work. He lasted four innings and he had a actually he had a 2.2 2.25 ERA. What the hell were the A's thinking? I don't know. But anyway. Justice for Okajima. That is my pick for Kai's Bean Dids. And my, I got the best walking song of all time. Yes. Okajima song. My honorable mention. Can anyone awesome. guess? 2004 World Series team. 